I want to give a great assembly welcome to one of our very own. Will you stand with me as we welcome Becky Fagan to bring the word, Pastor Becky Fagan. <laughs> Awesome. Good morning, everybody. How's everyone doing this morning? Are we awake? Are we ready? Excited about what God has in store for us. I am so thrilled for this opportunity just to share with you guys what God has been doing in my heart and soul, and it's going to be a great, great day. So first and foremost, I want to give honor to whom honor is due, and that is our Pastor Ron and Miss Kelly. Thank you so much for entrusting me uh, just to bring the word this morning. Many of you might not know, but I grew up under their leadership as a young teenager um, all the way through. He's been my pastor, and I am so blessed uh, to get to be poured into and just the call that God his place in my life was realized um, under his ministry and care. So thank you so much, and we're excited for today. So before I get into the word, though, I do like to give a general introduction of myself and my family, because many of you might not know me. If you don't have kids in kindergarten through fifth or maybe beyond, because now they're growing up and it happens. Um, some of them are teenagers now, and it's freaking me out. But anyway, so or in the production mode that often you see me in a silly costume or in front of an amazing set like we had a couple weeks ago. Um, First and foremost, I love the Lord with all my heart, soul, and mind. That is my first and greatest call is to be a disciple of Jesus and to follow him. My second greatest call is to be a wife and a mother to these amazing guys on the screen. Uh, Jimmy, I love you so much. He is my support and just my covering. And my son, Zeke, he's almost four. I can't believe it. Um, but I can't believe just when God gave me that call and gave me the mandate, what that meant for the ministry that God would use me to do. And so I just, I love my guys. And then last, I get to be the kids pastor, the elementary kids pastor here. And I love it. I love getting to see young lives molded and shifted knowing who their savior is and walking it out in their day-to-day -day lives. And so I love this opportunity. The last couple of weeks, um, Pastor has been on this, this series about the master class for life, where we've been studying out of 1 Peter chapter 4. And in one of those services, he was talking about a different verse, uh, but the Holy Spirit sometimes directs you somewhere where it seems like you're just getting sidetracked looking at your Bible notes. Um, but it, he directed me to chapter 4, verse number 11. And it says, if anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do it with the strength that God provides. So then in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever. Amen. And as I get into today's message, I want us to remember that I'm here to deliver a message that God has spoken into my heart. But what most of all I want everyone to hear in this room is a fresh word from heaven, a fresh word from God, because I believe that he is here in this room. We've ushered his presence through prayer and praise, and now he's ready to speak something fresh and new. So as we get into the message, I just want to start with prayer. And when I pray this way, I like to have my hands out because I'm ready for something awesome from my heavenly father. This is the position of God. I'm ready to receive from your word. So if you want to join me in that position, and we're going to pray that our hearts would be good soil, that we'd be ready to receive what God wants to say to us. Father, I love you. I thank you for your word and your promises. God, that you are so good. You're on the throne and you have good things to say today. So God, I pray for over every heart this morning, Lord, that they would be ready to receive from you. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence, that you would speak through me, that it wouldn't be me up here, but it would be your presence going forward. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. So as I get into today's word, I have a first key verse that I want to look at, and it's found in Genesis 8.22. This is what it says. Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. Now this portion of scripture happens after the entire world was flooded. It was a restart. There was sin all over the place, and God was like, enough is enough. So we have Noah and his family and all the animals, and then the world was flooded. The water goes down, the rainbow appears in the sky as God's promise to us that he is going to be faithful, he's, not, he's going to take care of us, and this is never going to happen again. And then this scripture comes forth, and it says seed time, harvest, summer, winter, cold, heat. These things are just going to keep on going as long as the earth is in orbit, as long as we are moving, this is the nature of how things are going to go. 
And it's so true in our own lives. It's true in nature that there's a time to sow seed, there's a time to wait, and then there's a time for awesome harvest. We love harvest, it's the best part of it all because we've put in all the work in advance. We waited the time that felt so long and then we get to gain something awesome out of what we put into the ground. So this year I started into a new endeavor. We moved into a new house last year and the first spring I just put in some flowers in our front um, flower beds. And it was so exciting to watch them bloom and grow. One of my favorite things in my front is my lavender bushes. I love lavender bushes. Many might not know this, but me and my husband were married in a lavender farm, like surrounded by lavender bushes. So yes, I love them. I love the scent. It's amazing. So when I saw my lavender bushes doing so well, I was like, well, I kind of have a knack for this maybe. I think, I think I can do a little bit more. So I loved seeing the flowers. And so this year spring came and I said, this is the year I'm going to to grow something that we can actually eat. We're going to get some veggies out there and it's going to be awesome. So if you know anything about me, I get really amped and really excited really easily. I get, I love a new project. I love getting my hands dirty, especially I found something new that I like to do was getting in the dirt, digging things up and just seeing the beauty of our handiwork. That's why for our fourth grade missions trip this year, we planted some flowers over at Rose because I just, I think everybody needs fresh flowers, right? Like it's so beautiful and so much fun. So anyway, so I get excited. We go to Costco and we get our little our kit to get the the flower beds going. I buy tons of dirt, fertilizer, and then the youth team, they were selling some plants in April, right? I think April is when I bought them. All right, so I bought the starter kit for the garden. All right, so it's gonna be peppers, it's gonna be more lavender, it's gonna be basil, parsley, and these amazing tomato plants. I was like, okay, I am ready. I'm so excited to get this garden going and we're gonna eat all the veggies. I'm gonna make a ton of salsa. It's gonna be awesome. This is gonna be great. I even got gardening overalls for my birthday this year because I am a gardener now. I dress like one, I talk like one, I am ready. So I'm ready, I got my plants, they got delivered. I was like, okay, here we go. Time to put them in the ground. So I get all my plants lined up in a cute little row and it looks awesome. I posted about it if you follow me on Instagram. And there's my son with the wagon and oh, it is adorable, right? So we've got this garden going and as I put the things in the dirt, it was so much fun to watch every day. There's a little growth. It's a little taller than it was yesterday. I see a flower. So each day we would go out a little bit and I would get the weeds out and I would give a little sip to the plants and just take such good care of my plants. This was my new hobby. This is my destiny. This is my purpose in life to grow things. So here I am and I'm so excited. Then it gets a little busy and a little rainy. We had in in May, we had some downpours and it got soggy in our backyard and so those walks out there became a little slushy. So I'm like, you know what? There's a window. I can see them from here. They're still growing. I mean, they've got the sun, they've got the water, they've got great dirt. Uh, Things are good. So it's growing, it's doing its thing. This is no problem. So days go by and then, you know, not just the rain, but then it gets, you know, this thing called surge comes up and I get a little busy, like things happen and ah, well, I'm just so tired. I don't wanna go out there. Oh, it's so hot. It's just a stress. Okay, well, they're growing, they'll be fine. So weeks go by, the bush gets bigger and bigger and it's, you know, my tomatoes have gone insane to the point where from the window I could tell that the vine had crossed over not just into its flower bed, but the flower bed next to it. This thing had become a beast. I used the miracle grow and it was a miracle. It grew, it was huge, crazy. So enough was enough. And one thing, like I said, I get excited about these projects. I go all in and it's gonna be great. One thing I don't do sometimes is research. And so when I had tomato plants, one of the research things you would have figured out if you would have looked it up online, any Google search would do, you would know that you need to put a cage around any tomato plant. People know that? Is that common knowledge? I hope so. If not, I'm, here you go. This is learn from my experience, okay? You put the cage on. So I had not done that and I knew it was out of control. So I was like, okay, Jimmy, we're gonna go. We're gonna go to Home Depot. We're gonna pick up the stuff and it'll be fine. It'll be fine, we'll just put the cage on it. It's not that far gone, we'll survive, right? 
So it was a Saturday night after Rose campus service and I was like, okay, I'm gonna get out there. I have one hour of sunlight left. This is the moment, it's gonna happen because it had been hot, right? And I'm like, I don't wanna be out in the sticky heat. We're gonna do the evening heat, it's fine. So I get out there and to my amazement, these plants, oh my goodness. They had gotten so huge that I had, initially I had five plants, only three were able to be salvageable. The rest of them I actually had to pull out completely because they had gotten all twisted and all crazy. They were choking out my lavender in the back. The lavender in the back is no more, it's done. Front yard is still doing well, so I'm still happy. But that one was gone. Um, the parsley, he didn't survive. Basil's doing really, really well. But anyway, I had to pull out so many of them and it's like, man, I have fruit on the vine that now I have to just throw out because I didn't do the proper steps. I didn't do what was necessary in the front end to make sure that my fruit was gonna be successful. Instead, I just winged it and I was excited. And as I looked at this living picture of what God was speaking to me, he gave me three points. God gave me three points from my garden story. And the first one is to see the growth ahead. See the little tag on my tomato plant said like big boy tomatoes. Apparently that was gonna be big, but when I got them, they're cute, they're little baby plants. They're not gonna do much, right? Like they need just a little space to grow. No, no, they are gonna get big. They're gonna get massive. The vines are gonna go all over the place. And so what, you, what I needed to do was visualize not just the little baby plant that is, but the giant, amazing tomato plant that could be if taken care of. If, if pruned properly, if given the right support, this thing could have been awesome. So at first I needed to see the growth that was coming ahead. The next thing is to create boundaries from the start. Had those cages been in place when the plant was small, we would have been able to survive. You know, he would have grown straight up, not to the side, and everything would have been good. I wouldn't have thrown out any fruit this year. I would have been able to make an awesome salsa by now, but I have no salsa. So I go buy it at Costco still. <sighs> it's okay, it's delicious. Then the next thing I learned, we need to remain watchful. The main issue for me with my garden was when I stopped going out there. I stopped making the trips. It became too much of a hassle to go all the way out, put the Crocs on and get all slushy in the mud. I was like, it's just too much. It's too far away. And when I stopped being watchful, that is when the weeds took over. That is when the vine went crazy all over the place, out of its zone and into everybody else's space because it was just so out of control. I wasn't watchful anymore. And that simple motion of just going out there and just keeping an eye on things could have helped my garden succeed. And so as the Holy Spirit spoke these things to me, he directed me to a passage of scripture in Galatians chapter five, where it talks a lot about fruit. It's the fruit of the spirit. And you see, a lot of times in kids' ministry, I love these things that I like to call the tool belts for life, right? There are certain passages of, passages of scripture that we start out at an early age. Midweek, we do this thing called our PIN program, where we have different things in scripture that we say, this is most important for our young people to know so that they can take on a world that is very dark and getting darker by the day. But we know by the power of God's word and his spirit that they will be successful. So these things are important. One of them is the armor of God. That's something I put on daily with my son as we drive to school. This is something that I feel is very important. Another one of them is the fruit of the spirit. Now, a lot of times in the kids ministry setting, you may have learned a cute little song and you may have even heard it as more of like a shopping list of things to put on daily. There's love, there's joy, there's peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are things that you're like, these are good ways to live, right? And as you read that, sometimes we like to piece it out. And we say, okay, I think I'm okay on patience for the most part, but kindness, I have a hard time with that one. So God, can you just give me just a little bit of patience or a little bit of kindness? My love is a little lacking, but self-control, I'm on point. And we kind of point them out as if they're all these like separate fruits instead of one fruit that comes from the spirit. And when the spirit is strong in us, we are thriving. 
others around us are thriving. We are walking in power and anointing and authority so that all of these things listed, it's not just like I'm good at one but not good at the other, but the Spirit gives you power. In the moments where you need patience most, Holy Spirit takes over. When I need love and kindness most, Holy Spirit takes over. In those moments where self-control is the issue, Holy Spirit blocks you from doing the things you're not supposed to do in order to walk in the path that he has called you to walk in. That is the power of the fruit of the Spirit in us. And as we stay connected, as we stay rooted in the power of the gospel and the power of Jesus, we get stronger so that we are able to get in alignment to what he has for us and our fruit can flourish. So I want to direct us to Galatians chapter 5, starting in verse number 16. If you have your text with you, you can follow along with me. I'm in the New Living Translation or just listen along. Because I believe that God has something very unique to say in the verses prior to where we talk about the fruit of the Spirit. So in verse 16, it says, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your own good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation of the law of Moses. So what this portion tells me is there are two plants trying to grow. There are the plants of the flesh and there's the plant of the Spirit. And these are constantly at battle. There is a war on the inside going on. Is it going to be the, the, the fruit? Is it going to be that vine that is able to bear much fruit? Or is it going to be a weed that only takes nutrients from your life, that only takes the good and it, it kills everything else off? Which is going to be successful in our lives? And I think if we go through these steps that I learned out of my garden we can be successful and thriving in our spiritual lives as well. If we keep an eye on the things that are not yet and we look to what is to be, God has something unique and special for every one of us. Verse number 19, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. So it's very clear what the weeds in our lives can become. It can become these things that just, some of them seem like big deal sins, and then some of them are like, Hmm, hostility. No one sees that. It's hidden in my heart. Nobody knows that I'm, I'm divisive or bringing division into the body of Christ. Nobody knows that. It's just hidden. It's small. And just like those weeds that want to make their way to take all the nutrients of this mighty plant that could be, that's what these works of the flesh, these fruits of the flesh can produce in our lives if we aren't mindful, if we're not watching out, if we're not getting in alignment with what the Lord has for us on a daily basis. Because what I found more than anything about my garden out there, it required a daily reminder, a daily looking at it, a daily care and connection to make sure that this thing was going to flourish, that this thing was going to grow like it totally could. And the moment that you take your eye off of it, that's when things start to go sideways and they start to go their own way. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There is no law against these things. So when they're talking about the law, they're talking about a way of life that up until this point, believers were living out. There were rules, there were regulations. 
But when Holy Spirit moves in, when the Holy Spirit gives us the power and authority, we are part of the family of God, God in us, God dwelling in us. It's no longer about rules and restrictions, but it is about a relationship with the life force of who God is. It's getting in alignment with who he wants us to be. It's not about trying more. I want to be better. I want to have more self-control. I want these things. But instead, it's about surrendering. It's about saying, God, I want your way more than I want my own way. I'm gonna stay plugged into the power source that you are in my life, that I can't want it enough, but I need the Holy Spirit to flow through me because on my own, I am weak. I am flawed. I am worldly. On my own, I am a hot mess. But when I align with the spirit, when I get rooted in him, I'm able to grow and flourish to a level that I couldn't do on my own because his spirit takes over and brings life to those around me. So we need to see the growth that's ahead of us. It's easy to look at our faith level and see it maybe small and just a starter thing. See, for me, I didn't even start my garden with seeds because I didn't trust myself to be able to bring them to a baby root at that point. It was like, let's just try something that's already there. And some of us, you know, we're just starting out and we're just starting to see the green of our faith and we're not seeing fruit yet. That's okay. Seed time and harvest. We do the work now. We put the boundary in now. We stay watchful now, even before we see any fruit existing in us. So that gives us a free pass for people in this room to give each other grace, to give each other forgiveness because we're all on a journey together. The Holy Spirit is developing things at different rates in every single person. So we have no reason to judge. We have no reason to point a finger, but we do have reason to partner together, to stand firm because we're all in the same fight. We're all in the same journey towards heaven. Our desire is on earth as it is in heaven. His kingdom come, his will be done. Let me be in alignment and I wanna be part of that kingdom. So it's important for us to not just see the plant for where it is, but we see the, the, what could become in us. Allowing space, allowing room, and that space looks like time spent in the presence, soaking in his presence, not saying a word, but allowing him to minister to us and speak to us, because that's how we recharge, that's how we refuel. Then the next thing is to create boundaries from the start. Where do those boundaries come from? They come from God's word. He's written them out so very clearly what the life of a believer should look like, how we should act, how we should show kindness, how we should work out this way. But here's the thing. It's not a list of when you're feeling angry, this is what you do. No, no, no. It's allow the Holy Spirit to take over. It says, get deeper in him, press into the promises, press into who he is. When you're feeling your love or your joy or your peace are somewhere else that they aren't near you, you say, Holy Spirit, I need you. I'm weak in these areas, but I thank you that my weakness is your strength. You come in, you eclipse me, you go before me, that you are fighting my battles, that I don't have to have it all together, hallelujah, that he has it all together, that I am relying on him He is my strength. He is my source. He is all that I have need of that I don't have to come up with this stuff on my own. So when we put that boundary of God's word around us, we join the house of God. We join a body of believers. We get healthy friendships that when we start to stray and we start to go other ways that they're going to point that out. They're going to say, hey, what's going on? Your attitude's kind of funky. Have you talked to Jesus lately? Did you start your day worshiping him? That hurts, that's the pruning. I don't, I don't like those conversations, but they're healthy. They're what you've got to have in order to have the healthy boundary so that you can grow to the level that God desires. What I noticed about my tomato plant that I had no idea that tomato plants did. Maybe all of you knew this and I'm the only one to just learn this. So if not, take notes. All right, so it's a vine and it takes over and does all the craziness. But if that vine is flopping over towards the dirt, roots start to appear. Did did we know that? 
People know that? It looks like an alien. It's weird. If you didn't know, now you do. You are welcome. So these roots will just start to like plop down wherever they think it should be because they're just craving the nutrients of the dirt. They're just craving to get down there and settle in and get all cozy. How many times does that happen in our spiritual lives? How many times does it happen where it's like, I've strayed, but now I'm rooted and I'm comfy. And time spent in the presence or time spent on Pinterest, hmm, let's weigh it out. Time spent at church or time spent doing anything else. Ooh, all right. And those roots become cozy. They become what I'm used to. They become how you grow. Because like I said, seed time, harvest. These are the laws. They are going to continue growing. We can grow flesh or we can grow in the spirit. Something's going to grow. And so that's where it's so important for us to remain watchful. We've put up the boundary, but you know what? Sometimes we can still stray, but here's that moment when I'm watchful. I say, no, 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 no. I'm focusing on God. I'm not going to go that way. I'm going to stay planted in the place where God has me because when I stay rooted and I stay planted in God's word and in his promises, I am going to grow. I am going to flourish. Things are going to be better than they were before. Each day greater than the day before. That is the promise that God has for us, that we don't have to just continue just existing, but we can walk in a fullness that we could never think of or imagine on our own strength when we get outside of the flesh into the spirit. And the good news is it's not up to me. It's not up to me, but the Holy Spirit does that in you and it's natural. And I want to go back to what the fruit of the spirit is because it brings nourishment, not just to you, but to everyone else around you. So when we're full of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit is love. When I'm full of love and love is coming out, that's going to affect people around me. When I've got joy and I've got patience and kindness, goodness, faithfulness, all of these things, they're not just good for my own plant and my own well-being, but they're good for the body of Christ. And so in where I am weak, others can make me strong. And as we stand together and as we rise up with the spirit empowering us, we are able to do more together as a unit than we could ever do on our own. So your fruit isn't just about you, but it's about kingdom. Everything God does isn't just about one individual, but it's about the kingdom advancing and the darkness of hell failing. That's what it's about. That's why we're here. That is our mission to live in step with the Spirit. We are reminded all throughout Scripture to remain in step with the Spirit. And this is what it looks like. When you start to see those fleshly weeds growing in, you say, not today. We're plucking out. I'm getting aligned with the Spirit. I'm going to keep my eye focused, and I'm going to see growth that I couldn't even imagine on my own. Right now, I might be small. Right now, it's just a seedling. There's a little green coming out, but that's it. No fruit. But God says, hang in there. I am with you always. I will strengthen you. I will encourage you. I will fill you with the power that you need to make it in this world. He's not looking for people that are going to fall flat on their faces out of weakness and terror and fear of what's happening in the world. He's wanting people to rise up, get your focus heavenward and be empowered by the spirit. God is empowering his church. And that is the word that God has so spoken to me and developed in me that it's not at the end of the day, it's not about me to grow my own fruit. It's not about me to be able to get these things in line so that I can be a better Jesus lover, but instead focus on the root, focus on the spirit, focus on what is growing up inside of you and don't, don't discount where you're at because God has something great in store for all of us, that where we're at is just where we're at. But if we choose to go with God, as we choose to allow his Holy Spirit to grow in us, the whole world can be turned upside down. 
because that's the power of the church. That's the power of God's presence here with us, Emmanuel. It's not just a Christmas story. It's an everyday story that God isn't this distant person that he sometimes is here when only when I pray, but the Holy Spirit allows me to be in partnership with him daily, led by him daily. Spirit, guide me. I need you more than I needed you yesterday. Fill me up because this day is going to present challenges that I'm not ready for. And maybe the fruit that I need today is a little more kindness. Maybe the fruit that I need today is a little more grace but God, you know what the fruit that I need today is and you can release that into the atmosphere. So as we, go, as we go into a time of just responding to what God said to us today, I want us to think about where we are at. Where are you maybe in this narrative? Are you at the spot where maybe I took my eye off of the plant, off of what was growing? Maybe I haven't focused on it like I used to. Time is getting away from me and I'm not spending the time that it takes to grow deep roots and go deeper in the Lord. Or maybe boundaries. Maybe boundaries are something that you're like, Lord, I feel like I'm too far gone. But let me tell you, if my tomato plants, if I have three that are still surviving after putting a cage around them, honey, you are not too far gone. That he has a plan for you. He has a destiny for you. That no one is a throwaway plant. Every single one of us, there is power in redemption stories. That our God is even greater than what I could ever do in the garden. Because you know what he does? He recreates. He starts it over. He gives you a new start. He's faithful to do that every time. And he says, no one is too far gone that every person is able to make a huge comeback. That is the good news of the gospel. That is the good news that those boundaries might not have been in place, but they can be today. And we just lean into his presence. We lean into what he has and expect growth. Expect big, huge things from your life with Christ. What's amazing is the fruit that is developed in our lives, it's not up to us. And he makes the plan for what this world needs. He uses you in the way that he knows this world needs to see his light in this world. And so as we go into this time of response, I wanna encourage you, you can make an altar here at the front or at your seat, but I want you to pray through those, mo those moments of whether it's boundaries, maybe it's denying the small start and that it's just not good enough. God says you're good enough. He says your plant will survive. Let's go in it together. Let's do it together or just taking your eye off of it. So as we spend these moments praying, and I love how this song just aligns with what God is speaking. And it says, God, we need a fresh wind. Only the wind of your spirit will bring the growth of the spirit in us. Only the movement of the Holy Spirit in our lives is going to develop the fruit that the world needs to see. So as I pray, I wanna encourage you just to get in that place where you're allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you. I believe God speaks regularly, regularly. We just have to get quiet enough to listen to him and allow him to speak into our lives. Father, we love you. I thank you for your word and for your promises. Lord, I thank you that we can surrender to you and depend on you for the growth and development of our spirit. And so Lord, as we go into this time of just responding and reflecting, to your, reflecting on this word, I pray, Lord, that you would breathe fresh life over this room. I pray that you would br breathe something fresh and new. And that, Lord, that, that we would hear from heaven today as you speak in these moments where we invite a fresh wind of your spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray.